Hi guys, this is uh, Ms. Oz talking about the movement of molecules. So today um, I'd like to do like kind of an overall uh, review of the chapter about movement of molecules. So in looking at this slide, I want you to kind of think about why you would say this particular slide is like the movement of molecules. So once you've kind of thought that out, I want you to pause your um, this little podcast and or screencast I should say and write down some thoughts and then come back and then we'll see how you did okay so one of the things that I'm hoping that you got is that this one doesn't require energy and this one does require energy so why this is like the movement of molecules is this one would be passive going down a slide and this one would be active going up a slide so here we have this. So if you think about it, we're going from high concentration to low concentration here. And this doesn't require energy. Clearly, he's just got his hands up. I'm just going whoo, all the way down. And it doesn't require any energy. So going from high concentration to low concentration without the use of energy is like passive transport. Now, on the other hand, if you start low and move your way up, you're going from low concentration to high concentration and just like climbing stairs going up a ladder is is considered like active transport so that's kind of a, a one way to start thinking about how we would break those um, processes down so if you're going to describe this particular box with concentrated particles here and moving to this how would you describe that so again take your time pause the program and I want you to write down your thoughts about how that what kind of transport that would actually be and why. So the questions you want to ask yourself is is energy used to move this product? Are we using a transport protein and how are the particles moving? Those are the three questions that you should always ask yourself in trying to figure out how a mo molecule is moving. So if we answer this question how are they or excuse me is energy being used? There's no picture here of ATP or any use of energy, so we know that it must be passive, but we just don't know what type of passive it is. So we need to look and see if there's a transport protein. If there's no transport protein being used, it would be just simple diffusion. If we use a transport protein, that would be an example of facilitated diffusion. And then just to one more thing about related to the as energy being used. Are we going from a high concentration moving out to where there's low concentrations? And yes, we are doing that. So again, that would be passive. So no energy is used, no proteins used. The molecules are moving from high to low. And because of that, we would say that that would be simple diffusion. So if we look at this question, or this picture, we're trying to figure out how we would describe this. And again, we're going to use these same, same questions. So what I'd like you guys to do is just pause this right now, answer these questions, and then come back and we'll see how you did. Okay, so how are the particles moving? They're going from an area of high concentration, and they're showing us the arrows here, and they're moving in. So high concentration to low would be this answer. Is there a transport protein being used? Yes, so we see that here. This is the phospholipid bilayer, and these are transport proteins. And is energy being expended? We don't see anything about ATP here, so we would say no, no energy is being used. So your overall consensus here is that, is that it should be facilitated diffusion. So in facilitated diffusion, energy is not used. A transport protein is used. And which one would you say that it would actually be here? Is it going from low concentration or high, or high concentration to low? So think about what you would say if the answer is there. And hopefully you checked this one. It's going from high concentration to low concentration. So what about this? So answer these questions, pause the program, and then come back and see how you did. So the molecules are moving from a low concentration to a high concentration. There is a protein being used. This is a proton pump that's a plasma membrane protein. Here's our phospholipids. And is energy being used? 
check. Yes, it is. So we know that this must be active transport because we're going from low to high, energy is being used, and we're using a transport protein. Now this is a little bit of a review about osmosis, which would be passive transport. So what I want you to do now is we're going to look at three different solutions and I want you to tell me which one is hypertonic, which one is isotonic, which one is hypotonic. And not only be able to describe the solutions, but be able to tell me what would happen to that cell. So look at this particular beaker. The P represents particles. So there's particles in the solution and there's particles in the cell. So pause the program and I want you to answer two questions. What kind of solution is that? and what's going to happen to the cell. Actually, I should say three questions. What kind of solution it is, what's going to happen to the cell, and which way the water would move. And then when you're ready, come on back. So you should have said that this is a hypertonic solution, and because water is attracted to an area of high solutes or particles, it's the water is going to move from the cell into the solution, so the, the cell would shrink. So again, we've got a hypertonic solution, water moves from the cell into the solution, and the water would, um, the cell would shrink. What about this solution? So this would be considered isotonic. Water would move in and out in equal proportions, and the cell would actually stay the same size. And what about this solution? So here, there's more particles inside the cell, so the water is going to move into the cell. It's attracted to the particles or the solutes. The cell would expand, and this would actually be a hypotonic solution. So that should remind you of the worksheet that we did. So that worksheet is a great um, review for different types of solutions and what would actually happen to the cell. Now. Getting back to active transport, active transport we know uses energy. The molecules move from low concentration to high. Sometimes we need a transport protein, and then these are the types of active transport. So active transport is just kind of like simple active transport, endocytosis, and exocytosis. And just to make it interesting, endocytosis um, can be broken down into three different types. But let's just review this. So endocytosis can use energy. Concentrated gradients can vary. It depends on what the cell is taking in, and we'll explain that in a second. We definitely do not use a transport protein, and again, we have three different types of um, endocytosis, a way that we can take things into the inside of the cell. So endo means inside, site means cell. So if you're really trying to figure out, because people can confuse endo and exo, use your prefixes to help you. Endocytosis, inside, so we're bringing something inside the cell. Okay, Pinocytosis uses energy. The concentration gradients, again, vary. We don't need any transport protein, and it aids the cell in bringing in liquids. And so this is a picture, but what I'd like you guys to do is actually click on this link and actually watch um, this process. Actually, you can cut and paste it um, actually being occurring. Okay, so that'll actually be a little animation where you can watch penocytosis. So pause the program, cut and paste that link into your browser, and watch the animation. This is a picture of penocytosis, so we're taking actually some liquid into the cell, and that's the um, link for that. Receptor-mediated endocytosis. So here again, we use endo or we use energy. Concentration vary, gradients can vary. We don't need a transport protein. And the reason why um, cells actually do this is to take in very, very specific things. So here's an example of a cell. And these things that look like Ys are receptor proteins that are embedded in the plasma membrane. So these particular molecules will actually be able to link up um, with this particular receptor. And then this will dimple in and then you'll have a vesicle, they call it a coated pit, of bringing that particular molecule in. So again, if you guys could take this particular link, cut and paste that into your browser, and you can watch actually receptor-mediated endocytosis occurring. Okay? And then once you're finished doing that, come on back. 
phagocytosis is almost, if you want to literally translate it, it's cell eating. So phago means eat and cyte means cell. SIS actually means a process of. So it's the process of cell eating. We need energy for it. Concentration gradients can vary. We don't need a transport protein. And it helps the cell taking in really huge things like microorganisms. Like if we have something in our bodies that shouldn't be there, like a bacterial cell, our white blood cell can kind of go after that. So here's my little go white blood cells. We have to love our white blood cells. So I have a, a picture of this actually happening. So here's a white blood cell and everything that looks kind of like, I guess, a hot dog um, are bacterial cells. So these are long cellular extensions and this is kind of like a scary movie, but it's going after these guys and you can see he's trying to link up with them. But once they actually attach to them, they'll pull them in and actually cell eat them. It's literally translated. So these are the good guys and these guys are the bad guys. These are bacteria. We definitely don't want them. So this is an animation of phagocytosis. This is a bacterial cell that's going to be brought in and fused with a lysosome which will then digest it. So if you cut and paste this particular uh, link into your browser you can watch that animation of phagocytosis and it likely will help you kind of understand it. Exocytosis is exo, means exit, outside. We're bringing something outside of the cell. We definitely need energy to do that. The concentration gradients can vary. We don't need a transport protein. And it aids the cell in getting rid of things like waste products. If we have an enzyme, even our salivary glands, when we secrete saliva, the glands in our mouth actually make it, but then they release the salivary um, the saliva into our mouths. So that would be a, a great example of exocytosis. So this process going on here actually would be exocytosis. So if we were to take this, cut and paste it into our browser, we could actually watch that particular process going on. So why don't you take a couple seconds to do that and um, then you can move on to the next thing. Hope that that helped and I will see you guys soon.